Well, everybody, hi, am I live? Okay, I think I'm live. It says live, 21 seconds into it. Sorry about the delay there. Hi, everybody, I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live. This I have done 164 of these now, <laughs> so you would think I would have this down really pat. Anyway, happy new decade for those of you who are joining us later. This is the first broadcast in 2020. And um, so it's very exciting, and I just want to welcome you here. Today we're going to do something I've never done in 164 episodes, and that is I'm starting with a clean slate, a blank slate, and uh, you can um, ask me any question today, and I will answer it. If it's about primarily, if it's about singing, that would be helpful. Jose Garcia, hey, Jose, nice to see you today. Uh, Awesome to have you here. And um, let's see here. I'm going to pull this in. I want to double check my sound. For some reason, in the last couple broadcasts I've done, once I started and went live, the audio uh, shifted back to a previous setting. So I want to make sure that you can hear me and uh, see okay. All right. So, Jose, happy, uh, happy new decade. Great to have you here today. And uh, you're first on the docket, so if you have any questions that you would like for me to address, you are the first <laughs> in 2020 on this live broadcast. So um, I hope everybody had a great New Year, and or New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and uh, that your prospects in 2020 look uh, good and exciting, and uh, particularly with singing. So I just... Uh, I just auditioned for a, a role in um, Music Man, and I've, I'm too old to be Harold Hill, and I don't want to necessarily audition for the mayor. That'd be a fun role. Um, he's a comedic character. It'd be really fun to do that, but he doesn't sing any, and I, I really want to sing. So I've auditioned for one of the members of the quartet, and I've just been practicing. They gave us some sides to practice, and... Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's it's much harder than I thought. So anyway, um, I'm very excited about it, and uh, we'll we'll find out how that goes this afternoon. Um, so let me see now. I've got a couple things going here, and I want to make sure that I get it all right. I am going to pull out something a little bit different here. Let me just see. Um, all right. Okay, so um, if I don't get any questions, I'll just start talking about singing. So I'm going to do a pop out here and get this thing separate from the other one here. Okay. All right. So Jose asks me, what can you do to improve tone once you feel your pitch is decent? Um what can you do to improve tone once you feel your pitch is decent? So, Jose, I, I want to start by saying that the, the thing that I think is going to provide you the best uh, for the, you know, for, for the, the best for the voice is to get everything in balance. And by that I mean that um, the larynx is down, it's resting where you speak. Let's just, let's just say by definition that a balanced voice is where you talk. And so if I'm having a conversation with you and we're together one-on-one -on -one, sitting comfortably or standing comfortably and just chatting, I would say my voice is imbalanced, is in balance. Um, and so that's what we want to get to in our singing. Now I've been, I've been practicing now for a few minutes here this morning or this at this time, and um, <clears throat> so I can sense a little bit of a little bit of a in between warm up and ready to sing. <laughs> but uh, so we want to eliminate tension in the voice. So if I said, ah, it's uncluttered. In other words, I'm not putting anything into it. I'm not adding anything that's unnatural to my natural sound. And um, 
I'm not um, manufacturing anything special in terms of my tone. Even if I went up higher. Mm -hmm. So f for me, the number one thing is to have no tension. The larynx is down and everything is at ease. It's, it's, a, um, it's an easy production of sound. I'm not trying to force it. I'm not trying to change it. And I, so I have to have a steady amount of air. The vocal cords have to be uh, giving a steady amount and an equivalent amount of interaction with the air. So it's about equal parts air, equal pa parts of vocal cord. And I, my, my, my tongue and my mouth and throat need to be relaxed and, and not getting in the way or interrupting the tone. And, and so I think that's, that's how you get to a really great tone. Hey, let, uh, let's see, Lil, Little Ming 23, my favorite song. Also, can you give us a taste of it? You know, if I, if I, sang, if I sang a song that's owned by a, um, a recording artist and this has a copyright, they'll turn off my, my live broadcast. So I, I, I hesitate to do that. I, um, that's very, it's a very strict kind of world we live in now with copyrights and all that. But uh, my favorite song, I, I, there's no way. What's your favorite, you know, who's your favorite child? I have eight children. Who's my favorite child? I love all of them. <laughs> um, there's so many songs that I love that I, you know, and it depends on my mood and it depends on whether or not I, it, you know, so um, on the one hand, I love um, the, um, oh, what's the closing, the, the you know, I, I, I tell you what, I, I tell you a song I really love is February by Josh Groban. I think that's an awesome song, okay? And there's about 50,000 others that I really love too. Hey, Bob, hi, Bob. Uh, Nice to have you here, hi Bob. Hopefully, I've made the live show. You have. I'm a bass, and I want, and I want to one strengthen my lower range, and two become a vocal oct octavist. How can I go into those two subharmonics and power, and power that those Russian singers have? I don't know, Bob. I'm not even sure what a vocal octavist is. I can tell you how to strengthen your lower range, is to. Uh, this is kind of related to the first comment, and that is you want to eliminate tension in your voice. If my larynx is high, then I have a hard time singing the high notes. If my larynx is, is resting and free, and if my, my, my voice, everything here, all this nomenclature, everything is relaxed and kind of where I speak, then I can sing the low notes. They're all there. So, uh, uh, so right now I'm a little. There's a little tension in my voice because the E should be more clear than that. So, my larynx is up a little bit. So I've got to be. I've got to work on making sure that when I'm speaking, when I'm singing, when I'm practicing, that I'm not introducing added tension into my singing. That's, and so in other words, the best way to improve your low notes is to improve your high notes. Because the same thing that really drives great high notes is going to make your low notes better. And that's bridging, learning how to bridge from chest to head voice. And um, so we want to be able to do this without any tension. If I said, I guarantee you the low notes aren't going to be there. If I do that for very many minutes, the low notes are going to disappear. So I've got to be able to do that without added tension, and then I'm going to get, I'm going to be able to strengthen my lower range. <clears throat> hey, Thiago, nice to have you here today. Chuck, when I go from my chest voice to my head voice, it feels weird because the sound is too different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's one of the big challenges we face. I've never met anyone 
that had that challenge that was doing the chest part of it too lightly. It's always the chest is too heavy. It's too loud when we first initiate the tone. So if I said, ah, I, I'm just never, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not saying you're that loud, but if I'm loud when I first start and I've got a lot of chest in my voice, I got to get rid of all of that in order for me to blend into my upper. So here's what you do. On, you, you do it, listen, record yourself, and then listen to it. And estimate on a scale of zero being no sound to 10 being the most sound you can make. How loud is it? How loud is your chest voice? If your chest voice is at a six, let's say, in loudness, do it again, and this time do it at a three. Suddenly, it starts to blend together and sound the same. But you say, but it's, it's all very light. Yes, it is today. But if you keep working your voice that way the entire, so that they're equal and consistent from bottom to top, then over time, you're going to elevate the whole voice. It's going to get stronger and stronger together, chest and head voice together. Flavio Costa, hey. Nice to have you here today. I have a throat clearing. I have a throat clearing. How do I get it out? Lavio, you know, um, I have to clear my throat quite a bit. And it, I think it's related to, it, you know, this post-nasal drip. And I went to the doctor and um, he looked at my vocal cords and said, well, you've got acid reflux. One of the things that happens when you have acid reflux is that you get this post nasal drip, which try you know it's the body trying to counter the acid forming ar you know around the cord structure, and probably some other other things. So in that case, it seemed un you know I thought wow that's random that you know I've got some acid reflux but I get this um, post nasal drip and then I <clears throat> you know I have to always clear that off my my throat I get that phlegm building up on my vocal cords. But that's one of the re what's one of the things. So there may be several causes that you're that you have that, you know, that need to clear phlegm and whatever else off your voice. Um, there are other there's some things you can do. You want to go on medication if it's acid reflux, like me. You want to be sure that your voice is getting plenty of fluid. So you want to make sure you're hydrating a lot. You know, drinking water every day. I drink, the first thing I do is I drink 30 ounces of water in the morning and then I drink another mm, 12 to 18 ounces of um, celery juice and then I drink a, a large, uh, you know, a half a quart. Throughout the day I drink a quart of green, uh, a green smoothie, green smoothie juice and, and then I'll, I'll sip uh, 12 to 18, about 12, 13, 14 ounces of a glass of water with some vitamin C in it. So I'm trying to get a lot of fluids. And uh, I think that helps, definitely helps. But if you keep having tr trouble, I would go see an ENT doctor and have them take a look and see if they can see something going on with their voice. Carlos, hey Carlos, nice to have you here today. I've been suffering from pulled chest high larynx. It seems impossible for me to hit the E above middle C and hitting F or G is a myth for me. Join the club, Carlos. I was that way until I was 43. And I had no idea that I could do anything different. At least you're aware uh, that you can do something better. I didn't even know that. My goal was to hit those three notes in the first quarter of 2020. Is that possible or doable? Oh, sure. No doubt about it. Yeah, so what you're talking about is learning how to bridge. So you're hitting the top of your chest voice. And now you have to learn to bridge through the through that transition, E, F, F sharp. And then actually you'll be singing G's. So for all of you who don't know your vocal type, uh, and Carlos, sounds like you're doing, uh, you know your pulled chest high larynx. Do the exercises for pulled chest high larynx. Now the only caveat to this is if you're 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. It can be more difficult and take a little bit longer but it's still possible. 
So uh, make sure you're doing those exercises for pulled chest high larynx that are on the w on my website. Uh, Thiago says, what are your thoughts about the Eagles and Don Henley? Love them. Fantastic. Some of my favorite songs and some favorite music from the Eagles. I just, I think they're awesome. Arquivo. Arquivo. Nice to have you here. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, he says. You've helped me sing high notes in one month. Awesome. Arquivo. Arquivo. Arquivo, um, congratulations. It's here for us to learn, right? But you did the work, so way to go. I think it's awesome that you did that. Um, now, let me continue on here. Um, Carlos Gonzalez, I really cracked bad every time I tried to hit the E, F, and G. Carlos, the... Yes, the problem is the larynx is coming up. Um, and so you, you want to concentrate. I would do, I'd concentrate on two exercises. I would do this gee, 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 uh, the real dopey gee, 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 and try it this way. Do it on goo. Goo, 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 goo. Now, if you find yourself saying, goo, 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 that's the larynx coming up. You're going into swallowing mode, and the larynx is coming up. It's hard to break this habit. It is hard to break it. And it's really tough if you're a teen boy because it's just now happening. It's just happened in the last year or two or three. This is brand new. Vocal cords are a bit long and, th and thick. Now, compared to the little small vocal cords we had before puberty. So that makes it really hard. So, um, but then, you know, it just, it doesn't get any easier for us guys. It doesn't, we don't suddenly wake up one day and we've got the ability to do that. It's just like a golf swing or a tennis rack, tennis swing or any other sport, baseball swing. It's like kicking a goal into the soccer uh, net. It's trainable. You can train yourself to do it. And, and so uh, don't give up. It's possible to do. And so you want to, so on those exercises, that dopey goo, dopey gee, or you could do it this way and say, nay, 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 Nays and everything you want to do a little on the quiet side at first, especially. Um, okay, so uh, Miracle BT. Hey, Miracle, nice to have you here. I have some problems of vibrato. My vibrato is not good. How can I have good vibrato? So Miracle, um, have, you, have you looked at the video on my website that shows five ways to do vibrato, and there's five different approaches to it? Um, are you saying that you have no vibrato or you have vibrato and it's uneven or it's too fast or it's too slow? Because there's some differences there. So the first thing I would recommend is I would recommend going to my website, powertosing.com, do a search in the, in the little search icon and type in vibrato and look for the five ways to do vibrato and see if one of those helps you. I do have a course on vibrato. It's closed right now. Uh, we'll be opening it up, um, but it's $100. So I mean, it, it, it's, a long, it's a long course, it's a big course, and it addresses everything about vibrato. And so that'd be my next suggestion, but I've got a wait list that you would have to go on uh, to get to that. So hi, Bob, says thanks. The vocal oct octavists sing the first octave the A, A1 through G1. Uh, <laughs> that's low. Uh, let me see. You're saying G1. A1? Is that the, like the first one? As if they were singing the third octave, a G3 and a G, uh, A3, G3. Vladimir Miller is one example. Okay. 
Bob, that's pretty aggressive. Hi, Bob, that's pretty aggressive. Um, I don't have any suggestions for you. I think that's more genetic than anything. <laughs> I've, I've never been able to train myself to go much lower than my genes have permitted me. And my genes permit me to, on a Saturday morning, I can, or the first thing in the morning, you know, I can get down to maybe the C, the C2, you know. But it's almost more of a rumble than it is a, a sung note. Uh, Aquivo, I change, I change uh to uh, uh, and it helps keep my larynx low. Yeah, so you're narrowing the, the vowel a little bit, and that enables the larynx to stay down. I think that's a great strategy. Never mind, since my head voice keeps on disappearing. I mean, I can't, I can't be safe without it. So when you say it disappears, never mind, does, does it, do you mean you're like you're breaking in the falsetto or you just can't make a sound at all? Ivan, hey, Ivan, nice to have you here today. I can control crackling in the higher notes only with effort and, and tension. Is there a better effortless way to avoid crackling in the bridge especially? Ivan, it's the larynx again coming up. That larynx causes crackling and scratchiness. And so again, it's, it's this idea of keeping the larynx down. And so one of the best exercises, I know everybody gets tired of me saying this, but right away it balances the voice. I've got just the right amount of air and, and vocal cord going, and uh, it, there's not much tension at all because if I were doing a lot of tension, I wouldn't be able to do the bubbles. And, uh, and you could do it on this long scale. And then once you get that, you can go to this And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to go back to one that works. And that dopey gee keeps the larynx down. And then once you work that through, do it on the goo goo. And then as you go to the, get that down, the the gi and the goo, do it without the consonant. Do it just with the vowel. Or e. so forth and come at it that way so that way you're retraining the the your nervous system to not grab it and have the larynx go up you're ha you're retraining your nervous system to do it allowing that vibration to move up into your head while the larynx stays down uh, Aquavo says uh, you are raising up your larynx and pushing your chest voice up that's what happens um, when you're in that uh, pull chest high larynx condition. Yago says, yes, I can pull my chest voice to F4, uh, but with my head voice, I can, I can sing the D5. It would be great to add those notes in my vocal range and, and say my vocal range is G2 to D5. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to be able to say that. Um, I don't know what you would, song you would sing in that. Maybe you've got some, Thiago. Um, I've sung a high C before in a show, and it's really a blast to be able to, to know that you can do it. Um, let's see. So uh, going on to uh, Arquivio, you have to connect this, these two registers. Yeah. So we, have, we want to connect everything. We want the bottom and the top to be seamless and so the tone to be consistent. Okay, um, hey, the painkiller, nice to have you here today. Is it important to use head voice on high notes? Because when I sing uh, a B4, I belt it. How is that working for you, the painkiller? Um, is it clear and easy? Uh, 
can you do it no matter what time of day or you know how many hours you've been singing? Um, does your voice feel fine after you've done it? Um, and um, are you able to go any higher than the B4 or to the C5 or C5 sharp? Uh, that's that's what's really going to make a difference, right? So you want to be able to. Um, many times when people do do what you're describing, is they crack or break on the next one or two up. And why would you want to do that? Skippy, what's the main vocal exercises you should be doing to have an overall better sounding voice? What's the main vocal exercises you should be doing to have an overall better sounding voice? So Skippy, we want to be able to um, get through E, F, F sharp. You want to be able to sing right through that. if you can do that you can keep going up to the next it's the next to the next and 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 also it your voice does better down below and so what you want to get the bridges of the voice the transition the passage areas of the voice the transition areas of the voice you want to get those down so that you can sing through there without grabbing without straining without reaching up without the voice breaking if you can get that area of the voice working Everything else is going to fall into place. It's uncanny how that works. And so the exercises I would recommend is this. But you don't want to let the voice break. You don't want to let go. You don't want to have that crack in the falsetto. You want to keep it connected. same thing with the tongue trill that's the first one I recommend because it balances your voice it starts to connect the chest voice to the head voice and so you're going through that middle area the bridge without cracking breaking or grabbing or straining or reaching and so it's very very powerful and, and then that leads to many other exercises. So I would recommend if you don't know your vocal type, you want to do exercises for your vocal type. So in the description below this video, ladies and gentlemen, is a, P a free PDF you can download. It takes you to a vocal test to find your vocal type. It takes you to videos about your vocal type. I teach you exercises for your vocal type. And then I, uh, you can download the exercises for your vocal type, which will help you bridge, help you do what I just showed you, okay? So I re recommend everybody, uh, if you don't know your vocal type, a vocal type isn't whether you're a soprano, alto, tenor, or bass. That's not what I'm talking about. Your vocal type is what you tend to do when you sing through that bridge area. Do you tend to pull your chest voice up? Do you tend to break in the falsetto? Do you tend to go really light and breathy? Otherwise, you can't get through it. Or do you mix through there? So you want... Uh, and you can do exercises for each of that, each of those vocal types. Guarantee you, pretty much everybody falls within those one uh, of those four uh, vocal types. Okay. Now, um, hi, um, Mike uh, Miyuki or Miuk. I don't know how to pronounce M I E U K lace. M. Lace, nice to have you here today. Um, she says, hi Chuck, or she says, hi Chuck, I'm alto, and the highest I can go in head voice is G5. If I try to go any higher, my voice gets airy and eventually stops producing any sound. How do I increase my range? So, uh, I'm sorry I can't pronounce your first name. I don't want to make it any worse than I have. But 
Miss Lace. Um, what I just said about your vocal type and doing exercises for your vocal type will increase your range. Once you're, once you, um, because it helps get your voice in balance, it helps you be able to find your head voice a little sooner probably than what you're getting into, and that's going to allow you to expand that range. So again, I, re I really just, you know, to make it simple, Go get the uh, free PDF, get my vocal type, or get your vocal type. It's in the description below this video. If it's not there now, it will be at the end of the broadcast. So that's because there's a lot you can do, and those videos will help you, and the exercises will help you. And you'll be able to get past that G5, I, I promise. The painkiller. Hi, the painkiller. I tried to connect chest voice on the lower notes up into head voice on the higher notes. I tried to connect chest voice on the lower notes up into head voice on the higher notes. Excellent. That's the idea. Uh, Adamoa. Hi, Adamoa. Nice to have you here today. Hi, sir. He said, "Sing." Uh, I sing alto, or she said, "I sing alto." Sorry if I get the gender wrong, you guys. I sing. Alto, my head voice is E major. How can I get go beyond it? Well, um, it's the same answer. You've got, all of us have to know how to bridge. That is, that we need to understand how to get from chest into head voice through that middle. <coughs> If we do, then we're able to do it because the larynx is down, the voice is balanced, and we get through there without added tension. But if we don't, we pick up tension there, E, F, F sharp, or ladies, A, B flat, B, C, that's above, above middle C. So the A above middle C, that's the A4, B flat, B, and C, that's where you bridge. <coughs> and if you can um, if you can do that, then your upper voice opens up to you because the same condition that allows you to go through your bridge allows you to go into head voice and into the next bridge and then to you know on up. <coughs> and it also enables you to sing your lower notes. And so um, it, it, it almost heals the voice in a way. So again, uh, the fastest way for me to explain it here is get that, get that PDF. John LaFontaine. Hi, John. Nice to have you here. You look a lot like Michael Jackson. Huh. I notice my tone seems to turn irrationally bratty and almost taunting when I attempt to sing some enchanted evening. My repertoire consists of songs from my range, but I can only sing really low. So, John, typically um, a, a kind of a nasal sound that enters into a voice is largely due to the larynx coming up, the larynx rising up. And so, again, exercises for any exercise that's labeled as um, a low larynx exercise, which in, in the case of my exercises are labeled uh, pulled chest high larynx exercises, will help you. It'll help get the larynx down and improve your tone so that um, you'll be able to sing a little bit higher than just um, some, some enchanted evening. Now, you could be a, a low bass, a very low bass, but you'll still be able to pick up a few notes up on top. It's the same principle for us guys who are, are basses as it is for the baritones, tenors, for the sopranos, altos, ten, uh, and altos, and mezzos. It's all the same principle. Miracle BT says, where, Sir, where are, where are you from? I'm from Manipur, India. I want to learn singing from you. Well, thanks, Miracle. Um, I am in the U.S. 
United States, and I live in the state of Utah, uh, just north of Salt Lake City, about 15 minutes. Miracle says, how can I learn from you? Do you have any online course? Yes, I do. Um, so what you want to do is go to powertosing.com and take the vocal test and email it. Email it. Don't don't send it to me, but email it in and get and you get a response back from uh, the computer. It will tally it for you, and then you add up the score and get your vocal type. You will get a an, a letter from me uh, inviting you to purchase the course Sing Higher Than Ever Before, and that's uh, it's a great course that a lot of people have used to do what we're talking about today, starting to get their bridge going. Stravos. Hi, Stravos. Nice to have you here. When, when, hi, when I am trying to keep my larynx down, like the goo-goo exercises, I feel that I'm losing my resonance. When I sing without tension, all my resonance is just, uh, when I sing without, when I sing without tension at all, my resonance is just on point. What can I do? <coughs> I'm not sure if you're saying that when you are singing without tension, you don't have any resonance or that when you sing without tension, um, you have a lot of resonance. But, um, yeah, so we, we want to keep, keep doing these exercises that are going to eliminate the tension, yes. But once you get the tension gone, then you want to start adding other, other exercises. So, um, sorry. So if I were, if I, if you were at a point where you you were getting through the exercises without much tension with consonants, like uh, you might want to try this exercise and uh, do that, do it on, uh, do it on the ooh, ooh without the G. things because you don't have any tension but now you're starting to uh, introduce different vowels and and going through your bridge that way and then pretty soon you can um, you just try all the different vowels ah. well that ah is a lot like na 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 so go back to na 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 no 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 or and so forth. Um, that's a great way to start building your confidence and um, the resonance. If there's no tension, the resonance will be there. The resonance will be there. Oh, you can try that exercise. If you have tension, you'll feel it grab, and then you need to go back to do the dopey keys and, and so forth, dopey goos without any tension. Eugene, hi. Thank you. You're welcome. Thiago, I, may I do the lip troll without putting hands on the cheeks? If you can, yeah. So the, the, thing, that, the thing that helps with these uh, lip trills, everybody, is you want your lips to be slow. And if you can do it that way without your fingers, fine. I find that mine go just a little bit faster. So if I prop them up, take the weight of my cheeks off of my lips, I don't have to use as much air, and I got nice, slow, floppy lips. But what you don't want is... 
See how fast and tight there's more tension in my face? I don't want tension. So that's why, why I suggest uh, propping your cheeks up. You're taking the weight of your cheeks off of your lips. You can use your knuckles. Make a frown. Put your fingers in the frown line. Find your jawline. Lift up. Find that sweet spot. Or if you can do it without your, without your fingers, great. But you want it that way and not fast or tight. That's not going to do it. Um, all right. So Thiago says, my speaking voice is a little higher than it was when I started to do vocal exercises in February last year. Is that normal? Speaking voice is a little higher than it was when I started to do vocal exercises in February last year. Is it normal for your voice to get higher? I don't, th I've never tracked that, Thiago. Um, over the years, my voice has dropped a little bit. Not necessarily, I don't know if I'm speaking lower, but there's more fullness, there's more resonance in my voice. And so I don't know whether what you're describing is that there is higher frequencies or different kinds of resonance in, in, your, in the tone of your voice or whether you're literally speaking at a higher pitch. And so that's different. And, um, but either way, I think the exercises should put you in a position where your speaking should improve. And, and I don't know, maybe you were, um, so it's difficult for me to answer that question. Typically, I don't see that happening, but I'm, I don't track that. And I've been unaware of it in any of my students. I haven't seen that in any of my students, but it may be, but I haven't tracked it. Um, and given the, what, the way the exercises work, I would be surprised if their voices um, went up in pitch. But, you know, it's different for everybody. Everybody starts different, too. Never heard that before. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me caught back up here with um, uh, Stravos. Hi. Uh, when I sing vowels, I have good resonance. Good resonances. But when I sing vowels and consonants together, I lose my resonance. Yeah. Also, when I sing... Should I contract my, contract my abs to hit a note in my mix like someone punching me in the stomach? Let me take this, the uh, breathing one first. The answer is no. You don't want um, to tighten your stomach like you're, you're going to get hit. Um, so let me just uh, illustrate what I mean by... Um, by this low breath. We've talked about it in the, in the past. So I'm standing up straight. My, uh, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I've got good posture here. My shoulders are back. My chest is up. It's not like this, it's up. And my hips, my hips aren't, my hips are rolled underneath, underneath me, so everything is in alignment. My ears are up here, up right above my shoulders. And so this is, and then my, my feet are about shoulders width apart. <coughs> you probably can't hear me. So um, now when, when you breathe, you relax this so that tummy drops and air, air pulls in. Then when you're using your air, You pull it in. I don't think that was on pitch, but anyway, that's the idea. Now, <clears throat> when I breathe again, I let it drop and reload with air. Now, rather than tightening my abs like someone's going to punch me, pretend like you have a little string attached to the to the back of the. Uh, to the back of your your belly button and you're just 
pulling it in gently. You pull that tummy in gently, not hard, just a little bit. And you hold it in there until you're ready to take another breath. Then you relax. Tummy comes back out, pulls some air in, and then you pull it in gently with a little string, your imaginary string. That is the way to do it. You don't want to, because if I, if I tightened up like I'm going to get hit in the stomach, then I've introduced too much tension, and it's not going to help my breathing. <clears throat> it's not going to help my singing. Good question. Okay, so um, let me see here. There was a second part of the first part of the question is oh, when you have, so the resonance gets worse when Stravos is singing with consonants. Um, I don't know without hearing Stravos, but you might want to check your tongue. You might want to try some exercises with your tongue out. So cover, stick your tongue out, cover your lower lip. Any exercise will do. Or, well, the other one's kind of hard to do it, but. And see if the tongue wants to pull back up into your mouth and get in the way. That may be affecting the, the production of tone. Uh, when you're not doing the uh, consonants, the tongue is at rest. See, the other thing that I would recommend is that whenever you're done enunciating a word, pronouncing a word, make sure that the tongue, the tip of the tongue, is resting comfortably just behind the lower teeth. Just let it just let it rest there. Don't pull it back into the back of your throat, or you know, just it should be relaxed and resting in the back of the, right behind the lower teeth. Okay, see if that helps. Thiago says I'm 19 years old. If that matters about speaking voice, yeah, I I, I just never met any uh, any 19 year old Thiago, um, where their voice, uh, but, but it might be just. You know, you're, cha you're still going through a vocal change. I just don't know the answer. Um, I don't think it's typical that the, that the pitch goes up. Um, it might be typical if, if you started down with this really imposed voice that you were trying to sound, you know, like you had a big deep voice or something, then, then maybe if you got rid of the tension, it might, it might change the resonance and so forth. But... Um, and maybe the pitch is a little bit higher. So many factors that I just don't know about that I, I really couldn't speak to, and I don't have any data. I just don't have any, I'm unaware of any data to really come to a conclusion. Ernie the, the giant chicken. <laughs> hey, Ernie, nice to have you here today. I always sing in tune, but I feel my voice is a lot more, is a lot more noisy. I play the guitar while singing, so I am confident with the key. How can I sing smoothly, but loud enough with no noise? Ernie, I'm not sure what the difference is between loudness and noise. What do you mean by noise or noisy? Is that like, um, are you talking about, well, I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of confused by the question. How can I sing smoothly, but loud enough with no noise? What is noise? Let me know that, okay? And I'm going to raise this up just a touch. Okay, so Stravo says, when I sing, I sh should I feel the resonance in my head? Stravo, in, even in head voice, for me, I don't always feel it there, especially when I was early in this technique. But um, so obviously in, lo in chest voice, you, you won't feel it in your head. You might feel some sympathetic vibration. I mean, I can feel my my jaw vibrating right now, and I'm speaking to my chest voice. And um, but I don't really feel as intensely in my head 
as I do in my chest voice when I'm in head voice. So, uh, but generally over time, I've come to feel it more. Uh, I can tell that the sound is uh, in the nasopharynx area above the roof of the mouth, or above the hard palate. I can feel it there better now than I could when I first started. So I'm going to say that as you get more and more into this, you'll start to feel it more. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being more sensitive to it or, or something. Michael uh, Miracle says, how much are the fees of the vocal course? It's about $79. Uh, I, I think it's that's the sale price. It's like list price is 97 or something. But it, it sells uh, if you buy it uh, within the time period. Um, it's about 80 bucks, I think. Blue, bo Blue Bob, Blue Blob, hey, Blue Blob. <laughs> is it acceptable to do the exercises lying down? Sure, yeah, you can do that. Ernie, the, gi uh, the ch giant chicken says, I always sing in tune. Oh, wait a minute. I already got that one. I missed the blue blob. Hi. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to skip over you. Ah, there's a couple things here I skipped over, I guess. Okay. Um, M. Lace says, thanks for answering earlier. I had another question. Sure. Sometimes I have trouble moving through fast pitches. Can you recommend any exercise or technique that will help with that? You know, that's a good question. Um, it's like an agility thing, right? It's just... It's hard to, to go on a, it's, in other words, maybe you can do this. But it's harder to do. And so forth. I would say that you want to try and do some of the exercises faster some of them quicker so that you're, um, you're conditioning your vocal cords to move at a faster pace. I don't know any other way to do it other than try and pick up the, the speed of the exercises. And that's, that helps. It's just tr uh, kind of training the fast twitch muscles, I guess, that are uh, I don't know. In our in our legs, we have fast twitch and slow twitch. I don't know about the vocal cords. I would think that because of their size, they're all fast pitch. So we should. But I don't know. A scientist would know that. There may not be a differential in the vocal folds themselves. So it may just be a nervous system kind of retraining, just training your nervous system to accept the speed. But I think it's a good thing to do to add into your exercises. And, uh, and then do this at the top. Do vibrato at the top and vibrato at the bottom. That way you're using the stretch and you're using the contraction uh, with that vibrato um, in, in the, with the vocal cord in two, two conditions. Stretched a little bit a little bit of tension in it, and then a little less tension in the shortened condition. But uh, good question. So it's just doing the same exercises you do faster. And, uh, you know, do them a cappella. You, you probably don't have an accompaniment to do them, but do it a cappella, do it faster. Uh, set a, set a, a metronome with, uh, a, you know, with a, um, an app or something on your, on your phone. And, and, and just push yourself to go a little bit faster. And uh, don't have to do it extremely fast at first. Incrementally get a little bit faster. And then do slow ones, slow ones in regular speed and, and then faster to, to develop that. I think you can train it. Grayson, how can I strengthen my break when it's very airy? When it's very airy. Hey Grayson, uh, good question. Um, the, the exercises for a light chest, no chest, uh, sometimes a light airy sound can also be caused by the larynx coming up. So a good exercise to, uh, to 
kind of anchor that larynx is just to do a na 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 or you could do it a little more exaggerated with na 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 through the bridge with that na na na, and you could do the na na na. It's a little more aggressive. You want to do it exaggerated. Na <laughs> And you want to do the breathing, the low breath, tummy out, air in, and then pull your tummy in while you're doing those. And that will strengthen um, what you're actually doing is not so much strengthening it. You're just getting the vocal cords to come together more firmly. And that will increase the, s the sound of the tone. All right, so I've got, I've got three minutes before my student comes. And then I've got a, I've got a bailout. So I've got to be done at the top of the hour here. Um, Michael Clark. Hey, Michael. Do you suggest doing vocal exercises daily? Yes. Daily is fine. Uh, I've been working strengthening my voice daily, but don't want to overwork. So, Michael, I, I would say um, anywhere, um, I would say, first of all, the important thing is that you're doing them correctly. Because you can do an hour of lessons really correctly, and that'll be great. You can do an hour of, less, uh, hour of practice uh, incorrectly, and be hoarse and not be able to talk the next day. You know, I mean, so you want to do them correctly first. If you do them correctly, I, th I think 30 minutes to an, uh, 60 minutes is a good workout. And I don't think you have to do 60 every day. Do 30 one day, do 60 the next, do the next day 30 in the morning, do 30 in the evening. I mean, that's, you know, um, you don't really improve the voice or grow it and make it more, you know, you don't really you work on it by balancing it and, and developing it gradually. It's kind of not like the gymnasium where you go and you put, keep putting on heavier and heavier weight and, you know, to get a bigger muscle. That's not really how that works. So you want to, um, I think 30 to 60 minutes a day is, is about right. Um, Seth Riggs says if, if, you're, if you're performing, you want to practice about it f as long as you um, perform. So if you got a three-hour gig on Friday night, you probably want to practice three hours, uh, at least up to or get close to that uh, several times a week. Just you know, so, so you're duplicating the the load that you're going to have on your voice. Let me see here. Okay, she's not here yet. Um, Ink King. Okay, so Strava says talk a little bit about jaw tension. Yes. Uh, you know, you can watch you can watch yourself in the mirror, and tell whether or not, you know, you're you might think you're you're not doing tension, but if if you start to kind of grab, or if you can't drop your jaw, ah, I have people is ah, they're holding their jaw kind of closed, and so you you can monitor it in the mirror when you're seeing. Go stand in front of a mirror and watch it. All right. I keep hearing, I've got a window right here, and I keep hearing cars go by. And so far, my student's not here. So let me try and finish this before she gets here. So, Stravos, uh, t any kind of tension we want to eliminate. And so watch yourself in the mirror. Uh, allow, your, allow your jaw to be relaxed and uh, monitor it yourself. That's the first step, is being aware of the tension. And that's a pretty, a pretty easy thing to, to monitor and to fix, just being, a con being conscious of it. Allowing the, the jaw to drop slightly when you're singing your higher notes so that the energy comes out, rather than holding it closed. Inking says, uh, hi Chuck, I've got pneumonia for the past five days. I'm wondering if you know how long it would be before I can sing again. It could be weeks, Ink, <laughs> really. But right now I can't speak at all above the C3. I can barely speak at all. 
Yeah. Uh, hey, take care of yourself, Inc., and uh, get plenty of sleep and drink lots of fluids and take care of yourself. You, you'll be able to start singing when you can start vocalizing, uh, but you shouldn't push it. Let, it. let that voice heal up. Might be a couple weeks, frankly. Ernie the Giant Chicken, thanks. By noise, I mean a pitch that is intolerable. Like many people complain that I make a lot of noise while singing. Um, Ernie, I'm not sure unless there's like a double, double pitch going on or a, a second sound going uh, in, in, your, uh, in the production of your tone. But if, it's, if the larynx is down, everything is, not, is uh, relaxed and you have this natural tone coming, if you've got that somewhere in your range, I would think of, I would concentrate on why is it good there and what's different where I'm having trouble. It might be some tension entering into your voice that you're unaware of. So check that out. Do you have some place where it's, it's good? My, I'm guessing that you do. And it's probably in the mid to lower range. And you just want to be able to approach the upper just like you're doing that middle and lower. Um, moi, 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 moi. Hi, my head is strong. Head voice is strong. My chest voice sounds bad. It's hard to control, and I have to push it if I want to get to get higher. Is there a way to know if I am singing chest the right way? It doesn't sound like you are, moi, moi. Um, and so, I would. Oh my goodness, that's. Um, you know, if you could just relax and say, ah. gosh, I don't know where she is here. Let me just check. Am I mistaken here? Um, oh, somebody called me. Maybe, maybe that was her. So, um, yeah, she should be here. Anyway, I got to pull this to a close, but uh, moi moi in a very relaxed, easy fashion. Ah, ah, sorry. Ah, 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 ah. Now, um, that's taking the chest voice down, but that's where you want it to be. You want to be able to do that. Now, as far as pushing the chest voice higher, you don't want to push the chest voice higher than about the E above middle C if you're a baritone or a, a tenor. And so uh, that's where you have to learn to bridge. And um, so I, I really haven't had too many students who had trouble with their chest. And so I would need to hear a little bit more about it, moi moi, and we're just out of time. I've got to, I've got to bring this to a close. Everybody, thanks so much. Uh, Loya Taha, I haven't answered it, one of your questions here. Uh, is it normal to be moody in singing? And some days I can feel my singing is awful, not in the mood, my breath is not helping me. Uh, I do my exercises, but still that feeling is stronger. Yeah, you know, I think it's, every, we're all kind of in a mood sometimes, and, um, and a good mood puts you in a, uh, I think it gets your voice going well. And so um, I think you're right. I think it does affect your singing. And uh, if you're not in the mood, don't sing. If you have to sing, you got to get in the mood. <laughs> if, if you have to perform, if you have to be, you know, if you're, if you're on, in a show, in a musical, or if you're, you know, got a gig and you're singing in a, a band or something, you got to get yourself up for it. And that's the work of the brain here. All right. Guess I better run out of here. Thanks, everybody. Lots of great questions today. Sorry I couldn't, you know, get to every single person, but I think this is uh, progress, and I think we got quite a bit done. So uh, I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live. This is number 164. You can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. I'll see you inside the next video. And take care.